So hello everyone, welcome to Intro to E-commerce and Dropshipping. I know a lot of you guys have been following me on my Instagram and have subscribed to my YouTube channel. I want to say thank you for that. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing because I will be sharing a lot of knowledge about e-commerce and dropshipping and how to build a business using your laptop. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So what is dropshipping? I mean, I get this question a lot when I tell people what I do. So in a phrase, dropshipping is just a business model where you resell products at a markup for a profit. I mean, that might sound like a very normal business model, like bro, that's what every business does. Yes, but the key difference here is when you drop shipping, you don't actually buy any inventory beforehand. So let me explain what I mean by that. So in a traditional business model, you have to buy inventory first from a factory or a supplier and then try to sell it to the customer. And once you get an order and that's when you deliver that product to the customer so dropshipping works a little differently you first sell the product to the customer once you have an order then you procure that product from a supplier or an agent and ask that agent to directly deliver that product to the customer so you never actually see or handle the product yourself and that's the beauty of it because you don't need to invest in a lot of stock or inventory beforehand so here's how it works. So you the dropshipper, let's say the customer purchases something using their phone, your website, you pass on that order to the supplier and the supplier then delivers the product to the customer. So let's go a little bit in depth, step by step. So here's the in-depth chart. So first you have to find the product to sell. Of course, if you're a business and traditionally a dropshipping business always revolves around a product as any business does, it can be business or a service, but in dropshipping, we focus on products. Now to sell the product and get orders for it, you need a website. So we build a website. Now your website's ready. Now, how do you get people to see your website? That's where you drive traffic. And we usually do this in dropshipping using social media channels like Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, Snapchat, Google, whatever you can think of, okay? Fourth step is getting the orders. So once somebody has given you the order, then you send to the supplier, the send you send the order to the supplier who then ships it to the customer. So this is where the customer journey ends because they've received the product, but this is not where our drop shipping journey or the drop shipping cycle ends because you need to provide a lot of after sales support, which is very important to grow a brand. It's that's the difference between a bad brand and a good brand is the customer service. That's what actually makes you into a brand. So you'll always get questions and queries and issues and feedback on, especially when you're scaling your business, growing your business. And so you need great customer support. And well, the last step is to take the profits home. Now, this is probably the most uh, asked question. Why would people buy from me rather than using Amazon or just do a Google search? Like why would anybody buy from my website? It doesn't make any sense. I mean, Amazon has billions of products and they can ship really quickly. They're probably cheaper as well. So why would anyone buy from you? Now, the answer lies in consumer psychology. It's called impulse buying. And I'm sure a lot of us, almost all of us have done this at some point in our lives with some product or the other. So what is impulse buying? Impulse buying is exactly what that sounds like when somebody buys something on an impulse without much thinking, you know, we're impulsive beings, our actions are rooted in our emotions. And so some of the common ones that make us take action like this is wanting to feel good, loss aversion, caring for your family, a societal status, etc. So good marketing as your job as a marketer is to invoke these feelings in somebody so they can purchase from you. So moving on, why dropshipping is a good business model? So low barrier to entry. That's that's probably the first point. I, I wrote it down as the first point because it is true. Anyone can start because it requires minimal investment. You don't have to buy any stock. You don't need to rent a place. You don't have to have employees in the beginning. So that's why it's very cost effective to get into. Now, secondly, worldwide reach and scale. The world's your oyster. Your ads and your products can be seen by customers all over the world. You can be sitting here in India and you might be getting orders from the US, Germany, Netherlands. And I say this because I've personally sold in these countries. So worldwide reach is a great, great um, factor of dropshipping. Now, third, ability to sell anything. So I've personally been um, selling for about three plus years, almost four years now. And I think I've sold so many kinds of products that I can't even categorize them anymore. So 
if you're a good marketer you can literally sell anything to anyone it can be a five dollar product it can be a 500 dollar product it doesn't matter if you're a good marketer a good advertiser you can very very easily sell anything to anyone fourth my favorite part is the location independence now when you're running an online business you can be working out of anywhere you can work out of a cafe your bed from beach while you're on vacation Anyway, that's my favorite part of the business and uh, I think it's really great. And uh, talking of earning wherever, you can even earn while you sleep. Like Because this business is, as the last point also says, is semi-automated. So it makes you money while you sleep. I think there's a very famous Warren Buffett or somebody's quote that you'll never be rich until you earn while you sleep. And I think this model is great to sort of do that at least on a beginner level uh, or a beginner stage. Now... I want to show you some of the results plus the potential of an e-commerce business. These are some of my personal results and I know like when you see them you might think that these are photoshopped or these are tailored in some way. I can tell you they're really not. I was in disbelief when I sort of witnessed the true power and scale of an e-commerce business. Please bear in mind that these numbers came after a lot of learning and failing. There were a lot of failures, a lot of sleepless nights. And this was not an overnight success. This is not a get rich quick scheme. So uh, without further ado, let's get into it. So we managed to hit 90,000 INR in a day. We scaled it up to 2.83 lakhs in a day. INR 3.82 lakhs in a day. Mind this is revenue. INR 7 lakhs in a day. Even scaled it to almost 10 lakhs in a day and crossed it to uh, close at 13 lakhs in a day. This is still not the highest days that I've achieved in the past 3.5 years that I've been doing this. And moving forward, we actually ended up doing INR 82.4 lakhs in one week and about 1.65 CR in two weeks. So this was a great time. This was, uh, of course, when you see a business growing, it's, it, it always looks great and it feels great. But um, you need to first learn the five pillars of an e-com business if you want to achieve results like that. Those results are not typical. They can be achieved, but it's really hard. It takes a lot of knowledge, practice, skill and time dedication for you to learn that. And to learn that, you need to learn the five pillars of the e-commerce business. Number one, product research. Number two, website building. Number three, driving traffic. Number four, order fulfillment. And number five, customer support. These are the five basics that you need to learn. So let's dive into each of these one by one. Number one, product research. So in e-commerce and especially dropshipping, product is king. I mean, if you don't sell something that somebody wants, you won't make good money. It will not matter how great of a marketer you are. It will not matter how beautiful your website looks. You will not make money. So here are the most efficient ways to do some product research and analyze the market because that's really, really important before you step into the market and put up your money to sell something, you need to figure out what to sell. So research needs analysis. Number one, use your social media feeds. So social media feeds like Facebook and Instagram are a great way to figure out what products are going viral. You can check out reels, you can check out Facebook videos or even uh, sometimes articles that link to products and that's a great way to find out what products are going viral. Second, use Amazon and AliExpress to look at the data in the market. So AliExpress tells you how many orders a certain product has. Amazon tells you how many reviews a certain product has and if the reviews are good or not. So by, by searching those, you can get an idea of what a product is doing in the market. Is it doing well or is it not doing well? So it's, it's a great way to figure out how a product does in a market. Using spy tools, there's a lot of websites now that um, sort of spy on your competitors for you. This is competitor analysis and what they do is basically they tell you that hey this pro this competitor of yours just starting started to test a product and maybe you should too. So that's a great way to see competitors and see what they're doing. Maybe they figured out they figured out something that you haven't. That's a great way to keep an eye on your uh, competition to see that what they to see what they're doing and to sort of always catch up or beat them. Fourth, using Google, that's keyword analysis. So Google, of course, we, everyone knows Google. You need to know what people are searching for all over the world. If you know what people are searching for, you can very easily figure out what people want to buy. It's, it's, it's very simple logic, right? <clears throat> so these are the four kind of analyses that you need to be doing when you do your product research. Now, don't worry, I will be doing a separate product research 
video where I'll be showing you these four different methods on how to do product research and how to find products that can make you a lot of money. Let's move on. Number two, website building, the second pillar. So once you have a product, of course, the next step is to build the website because that's where people will come and place the order, right? And building a good website is essential to having great conversion rates and higher profits. So, and there's just one and only one platform that I'll ever recommend as you might have seen on my Instagram as well, that's Shopify. Now, why Shopify? <coughs> Sorry. The answer is simple because it's an all-inclusive tool built specifically for e-commerce. And like any feature that you can think of is already in there. I mean, email flows, SMS flows, they have an app ecosystem. So it's just an all-inclusive tool. So if you want to sell something, there is no better option than Shopify. And it, plus it's highly intuitive and easy to use and learn, especially as a beginner. So even if you've not ever built a website in your life, it'll be very easy to learn on Shopify. It's, it's really easy. It's drag and drop. There's no coding required or anything like that. I will also go over a Shopify website building tutorial in the next upcoming video. So please subscribe. Now, pillar number three, your website's ready. It's time to show it to people, right? Like, so driving traffic essentially just means getting people to your website. Now there's, there's so many innumerable, uncountable number of ways to drive people to your website, but they can be categorized into two main categories, which are organic versus paid. Now. <clears throat> organic traffic is free it's better for starting out because well it's free so you don't have to invest in it it's great to sell lower priced items i mean you can argue that higher priced items can also be sold but it's great as a starting point and if you have less friction or a lower priced item you're more likely to get sales it's slower that's sort of a um, disadvantage of organic traffic that it's slower it takes time to build up it takes a lot more effort and examples of that can be social media, SEO or word of mouth. Now, paid traffic is, well, it's paid. So it's great for scaling. So let's say you've built up your business to a point where you're ready to invest in advertising. Once you do that, it's it's great. It's a great mechanic for you to scale your business because ads work really fast as the fourth point says. They, they give you almost instant results uh, as compared to organic. So, And it's also better to sell higher priced items because you have a lot more control on how you sort of effectively show your brand to people and how they perceive it. So examples of paid traffic is Facebook ads, Google ads and email campaigns. Now, pillar number four. Once you've driven traffic and have orders on your website, it's time to send them to customers, right? So this is where you see the real advantage, the real power of dropshipping. So because up until this point, you haven't really spent even a single rupee on any kind of stock or inventory. I mean, I don't know. Tell me another business that you can think of that works like that. Because up until now, your only focus has been on finding something to sell, how to sell it, how to build a website to sell it. You haven't even seen the product or touched the product. You've only literally seen it through a screen. So, and you've already received money for it from customers. Like how crazy is that? So this is, this is where I love this business model where uh, you really can sell anything to anyone without ever having touched it. So, I mean, it's, it's obviously it's advice that you do order it beforehand and see the quality and everything like that. But I'm just saying that it is possible for you to sell something without ever having touched it, which is pretty crazy. Now, how to fulfill orders? So simplest way to fulfill orders when you're starting out is AliExpress. I mean, you simply connect your Shopify account to your AliExpress account and import the AliExpress URL and automatically place an order through your store. So a customer comes to your website, places an order, that order automatically goes to your AliExpress account. You pay for it and AliExpress directly delivers it to the customer. You never even do anything. You literally press a button to fulfill your orders. So just pay for the order on AliExpress and they deliver it. Now, this works for any and every product because just like Amazon, AliExpress is a huge website with millions of listings. And I don't even know, it might be even bigger than Amazon. Don't really know. But uh, it works for AliExpress dropshipping. It works for print on demand. But please keep in mind that this method is only good as a starting point. So when you're scaling and receiving a lot of orders, you need a private shipping agent to do high level of quality checks, just do bulk shipping, give you bulk pricing and even faster delivery. 
So even at the starting point, it's very important to choose the right AliExpress sellers to minimize complaints and returns because you want to keep quality high. Just because you're not able to see or handle the product doesn't mean that you can't make sure that the quality is not high, right? Like, I mean, you want to, sorry, the quality is high. You always want to make sure that the quality is always, always great because you don't want complaints or returns because that can really, really kill your business. Pillar number five, customer support. Now, it's a simple fact of business that you will have customer complaints. It's it's unavoidable, especially when you're scaling. It's just unavoidable. People are going to have problems, complaints, questions, queries, but it can be minimized. So good customer service is the most important post-sale mechanic that will help you build a reputed brand and avoid payment processor issues. Because when somebody initiates a refund, you know, a refund um Let's say they raise a refund ticket and they do it through PayPal. Now PayPal is gonna come to you. Uh, PayPal is gonna come to you and they're like, "Hey, why is this customer? Why do they want a refund? Like, why did you not provide a service correctly that you got paid for?" So every payment processor is gonna look at you with squinted eyes and try to judge you. So you always wanna make sure that your customers are really, really happy because at the end of the day, you wanna keep the payment processors happy and also, of course, the customers. So in the beginning, you can do customer care yourself and then hire a virtual assistant to help you once you're scaling up. Now, I wanna go into a case study, the INA 4.2 crore case study. This is how I scaled one of my brands to INA 4.2 CR in sales in just three months in the pandemic, all while sitting at home. So these are the tools I used, literally just what I explained to you. I used my social media feed to look for this product. That's where I found it on my Facebook feed. I built my website on Shopify. I used Facebook to run ads to drive traffic to my website. I used a private shipping agent to fulfill the orders and I hired VAs for support. Now, here's some proof. So in June, we did 1.43 CR. In July, we scaled it up to 2.22 CR. And August was a slower month with 58.8 lakhs. Now, 27 June was the highest day of June. It was 11.6 lakhs. And 11th of July was uh, my highest day ever, which was 15.5 lakhs in a day. And so from starting of June, 1st of June to 31st of August, we actually did $547,392, which comes out to INA 4.2 CR. Now, looking at all the numbers, the money is great, but here are the real laid out financial benefits of e-commerce. It can actually be life-changing when done right. So the financial benefits range from it being a great cash machine to fund further projects. It can be a waterfall effect. Imagine you run a store today, you have a great product, you make a lot of money from it. You can then invest that money into testing hundreds of new products. So you can get hundreds of new income streams and potentially make that money even a hundred times. So secondly, you can sell or exit a brand for a lump sum of money because you know investors are always looking to buy good brands with good customer service, with good uh, numbers and with good products. So you can also generate profits on semi-autopilot. Like I said in the beginning, this is a semi-automated business. So it's pretty great. You may, you earn while you sleep. And what, my favorite part about this, it's unlimited scalability. Like I said, worldwide reach means unlimited scalability. You can literally pump in all the money you want into ads if you're getting great results. And you'll just keep doubling, tripling or quadrupling your money. So it's pretty great that way. Now, it's not just money. E-commerce actually teaches you some really, really cool and serious skills like sales and marketing, copywriting, website design, video editing, media buying, customer care, supply chain management. Once you start an e-commerce business, you will automatically have to go through a series of events that will teach you all of these skills because without learning these skills, without adapting yourself to learn these sort of skills, you'll never have a successful business. So you have to be open-minded. You have to be ready to learn. You have to be very, very um, excited about learning these new skills. So, and you can always utilize these skills later in the future to render services, become a consultant or even a coach. So it's a great learning experience. You learn so much. You learn about fields and jobs that you never thought of and it's a great experience so make sure you're always open-minded about the learning part now just like every business model dropshipping isn't perfect there are some cons to it so and I want to be transparent with you so let's go through the list so they can be slow shipping times 
because since you know products are going from a third party vendor to the customer shipping times can range from let's say one to three weeks and customers might not be happy about that there's always high competition like because there's a lower barrier to entry to entry in the in the business so there's obviously there's high competition and um, there's payment processor issues like i explained the paypal issue like payment processors can really drill down on you so you want to make sure that they're always happy there's no cash on delivery cash on delivery does not work with drop shipping you probably want to try it because if you if you're here if you're watching this video from a country where drop ship where cash on delivery is really really prevalent you will be thinking that hey maybe i can just do cod but it won't work and it will defeat the whole purpose of drop shipping because in cod you won't be able to receive the payment before you sell something so that of course and slow like i said they can be frustrated customers there are always banned accounts facebook can ban your account at any given point of time if you violate one of their policies there's a little bit of inconsistency sometimes well inconsistency comes from you not being consistent but it in uh, in the drop shipping space there are always some sort of months that are not the best you know there's some always <clears throat> there's always some kind of technical glitch going on but you can always adapt to all of that don't get scared so and it requires intense levels of focus and lastly it's just not for easy quitters because this is a space this is an industry where there's a lot of competition there's a lot of scope for growth so these two worlds will always keep colliding with each other so if you're not ready to take the brunt of it all if you're not ready to go through it if you're not really excited about learning something new you won't be able to make it now uh, having said that uh, this video is coming to an end but a lot more is coming i will be doing website building classes here i'll be doing facebook ads tutorials email marketing classes even print on demand masterclass and a lot more Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.